Good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of Finland. Grab my pencil. Finland is located up in the Nordic countries. It is not part of Scandinavia. It's just nearby all the other Scandinavian countries. It has this border with Sweden, this border with Norway, all the way up here, and then this long, long border with Russia. It's a very long one, isn't it? Very important to its history. Finland also borders the Gulf of Bothnia and the Gulf of Finland in the Baltic Sea. And there's a lot going on up here. There are over 180,000 islands that belong to Finland. Most of them are right here in an area known as the Åland Archipelago. And over here are the Åland Islands, which I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, at least in Finnish. I've heard Åland. I know in Swedish it's like Åland or something, but I think it's all in. Something like that. <laughs> it's very complicated. Anyway, these islands are actually autonomous. They went back and forth between Sweden and Finnish control throughout history, so they are technically part of Finland, but they are an autonomous place. They make their own rules within the realm of Finland, basically. It's kind of complicated. This area all down here is very interesting. First of all, we can find the capital city of Helsinki right here, Helsinki. And this area is a lowland area. Like I mentioned in my, what was it, Estonia, Latvia, Poland, all those countries down here, this used to all be ice, like all covered in glaciers. And as the ice age ended, they receded back, 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 back back up to the Arctic. So as those glaciers were scraping and moving and dragging along, it created a lot of interesting land formations. The most prominent you can see here being all of these lakes. There are so many lakes in Finland. There are about 190,000 lakes. Its nickname is Land of the Thousand Lakes, but there's far more than that. The largest lake is Lake Saima right here, but they're all over the place. There's also lots of rivers since there's so much wetland, lots of marshes and swamps, and all those wonderful wet things, basically. It's a very wet, marshy, marshy place. Um, let's see, we have some major cities down here in this area. Pretty much all the major cities in Finland are in the south. Where it's much warmer than up north. Um, Espoo and Vantu up here are pretty big cities outside Helsinki. Torku we're going to talk about a lot in its history. There's also Tampere and you can see right here is a city called Nokia and yes that's where Nokia cell phones come from and the Nokia company is still there still making electronics. Apparently they're working on VR right now since you I mean if you were alive in like 2000 do you remember Nokia cell phones they were harder than diamonds they're very good phones for the day and age right but as we go north it doesn't get so much wet I mean it is still pretty wet but it gets very cold and very forested this main area up here is covered in what's known as the taiga forest which spans all across here and all across Russia. It's the world's largest forest. It's it's a monster of a forest. It's huge. So many trees. Finland has a big lumber industry since it has more trees than it could ever use. And it, as you can see, gets less and less populated as we go because it's much, much colder up here. And you can even see right here is the Arctic Circle. So everything up here is in the Arctic, in an area that's known as Lapland. Lapland is home to the indigenous Sami people, who uh, 
are very famous for herding reindeer and um, preserving their language and culture for hundreds, if not thousands of years. This is also the land of the midnight sun. Since it's up at the top of the globe, the sun doesn't set all the way during the summer, and it doesn't come up for days on end during the winter. And, of course, you can also see the aurora borealis up here on certain nights if the weather's in good condition. Also very important to mention that right here in this city, or town, I guess, of Novan... Rovaniemi? There we go. Rovaniemi, right there on the Arctic Circle, is where Santa Claus lives. And you may say, ha ha. No, I'm serious. That's where Santa Claus lives. That's, that's where he lives. That's where his workshop is. You could go visit it. That is where he lives. And for the most part, I think that's about it for geography of Finland. There are lots and lots of rivers. I, uh, I could name them, but I'd probably butcher the names. So just know that there's lots of rivers. You go up here and it gets quite mountainous. But for the most part, Finland is very forested and very wet. So, with that being said, let's get into its history, and then we'll flip through this book, and I'll show you some fantastic pictures of Finland. So, like I said, this was all glacier, and it receded, and once that happened after the last glacial ice age, people started to move in. There's some possible Neanderthal evidence in Finland, but people definitely came in during the Stone Age and settled down here in like around 8500 BCE. Over the years, eventually, as time goes on, trade began with a lot of the Nordic countries in this area, not just like Sweden, Denmark, but also down here as well and up here. And over time, there were three distinct ethnic groups slash regions within what's now Finland. In this corner, we had what was true Finland. It's known historically, but this was where the Finnish people lived in this area. The central kind of lakey area was the Tavastians, <laughs> the Tavastian people. And then more out here was the Karelian. And, of course, up here would have been the Sami. They were already up here doing their thing, herding the reindeer and all that. So, over here, this area is in quite Russia. It's known as Novgorod. And we do have Sweden over here. This part of here, let me move this real quick. This part of Europe is Roman Catholic. This part of Europe is Orthodox. So, as... Crusades started to roll out in the 12th century, I believe. Um, throughout this area, lots of pagan tribes still existing up in the Baltic states. Moving up into here, we're pushing the Catholic religion, and people over here pushing the Orthodox religion until it was sort of split. And the, the Swedes really came to dominate the area. I mean, this was practically Sweden at that time. They were the ruling party, ruling language, ruling everything. The capital was here at Turku. And the Finns were considered lesser than. They were the, the weird Finnish people, you know, speaking their language. Not Swedish, so obviously not important, I guess, was kind of the mindset there. Much, much later, Sweden would really come to value Finland in terms of their fighting ability. Because Sweden fought a lot of wars. We'll get to that in a second. But in the 16th century, a man named Mikhail Agricola was a student of Martin Luther down in Germany, who famously came up with Lutheranism. So when he returned to Finland, he brought that with him, and it became a very Lutheran area still is today. Let's flash to the 18th century. This is a very abbreviated history of Finland. I'm already skipping over a lot. It's just what's important. The 18th century, so much happened in this country, so I want to get to it. Sweden and what's now Russia started to fight, and Finland was their battleground. 
there were, I want to say, three different wars between Sweden and Russia during this time. The last one was over who was going to control this area. But I'll get to that in a second. The Finnish people were not very appreciative of this, and they were ready for independence, but Sweden was not. Sweden wanted to hold on to it. And in 1809, in that last war, Russia won. The area became the Grand Duchy of Finland. It was a part of Russia, but it was autonomous, kind of making its own rules with the approval of the Tsar. And Tsar Alexander, who was Tsar at this time, was pretty lenient and let people speak Finnish and just do their thing. And um, that wasn't going to last, but during that time, a couple of things happened. Torku burnt down, so the capitals moved to Helsinki, where it still is today. A very important book was written in this time period called the Kalevala, which was when, I believe he was a poet, traveled to different villages all throughout Finland and collected stories. Sorry, my nose is stuffing up. If you can hear that, just... Okay, that's a gross sound. I don't want to make a gross sound anyway. He traveled to a bunch of different villages all throughout Finland and collected all of their stories and put it all together in one long epic poem like a story of Finland. It's a very important book in Finland today. There is also very sadly a famine from 1866 to 1868. Um, just a warm summer cold winter doesn't really do well for crops in this area. And then once Tsar Nicholas II took the throne, he really cracked down on not just Finland, but any other area that Russian controlled that wasn't Russian, you know, and implemented what's known as Russification, as in, you now speak Russian, you follow Russian customs, you have Russian culture, forget Finnish, which people didn't take too kindly to after being so autonomous for so long. But they didn't have long to worry about that, because in 1917, the Russian Empire fell apart during the revolution. So Finland was like, um, they were, they were in charge of us, so should we do something? So they started to, like, hold elections to figure out, um, what to do. But once the Bolsheviks took over, Finland decided right then and there they're going to be independent. And not mess with all of that nonsense. So they declared independence on December 6th of that year. But it wasn't an easy independence. There were two main political parties, one known as the Reds, that supported the Russian Revolution and the Bolsheviks and wanted a socialist country. The other side was known as the Whites, which basically wanted a more democratic one. And there was quite a big civil war in 1918 between these two groups, but the whites would win out, and democracy came to Finland until November 1939. 1939, a really big year in Europe, as World War II had just began. Russia, being Russia, swooped in and invaded uh, because they had signed an agreement with Germany. I feel like I mention this any time I have like an Eastern European country, now I get to do it with Finland. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, where um, Germany and Russia agreed to partition and um, have dominion over different parts of Europe. So, unbeknownst to Finland, Russia signed that they were going to control Finland. So once war broke out with Germany, they hopped right in. And Finland was like, what are you guys doing here? They said, we control you now. Finland said, no, you don't. And a war breaks out up here in Finland, known as the Winter War. But, you know, you don't fight a war with Russia in winter, right? <laughs> this was in November of that year, so... The Russians won out, even though the Finns fought very, very, very hard with all their might, all of their sisu. And uh, they signed a peace treaty in 1940. And... Finland was like, well, you know, if Russia's going to dominate us like this, why don't we ask Germany for help to protect us? So they invited the Nazis in. The Russia's like, what are you doing? Those are the enemy. Why would you invite them in? So another war broke out known as the Continuation War in 1941. 
and Finland once again fought very, very hard against the Russians, but the Russians won out again in the end and told Finland, okay, you're being really annoying, just sit down and do what we say, pretty much. They allowed Finland to remain independent, but told them they had to pay reparations. Meanwhile, there's Nazis up in Lapland. That's where they were stationed. And Finland's like, okay, you guys gotta go. Like, we shouldn't have invited you in the first place. You guys gotta go. And they were like, no, like, we're Nazis. You can't tell us what to do. So a war broke out known as the Lapland War in 1944. And the, the German Nazis eventually had to leave because it was 1945. And they were losing the, the big war down here, so... Finland technically won that one. But in the 1950s, Finland worked hard and paid their reparations to Russia on time. They're very proud of that. And they did this by going all in on their manufacturing, their market economy, focusing really, really hard on that. Not to mention also focusing on their citizens making sure that they had free health care, free education, so that everyone was perfectly happy. Finland today is considered one of the happiest countries in the world. I believe it's ranked number one the past few years. Just because the government does everything they can to make sure that people have freedom to live their lives. And when you have happy people, you have happy workers who can work hard and produce hard and pay back all their debts. So... Besides a small recession in the 1990s, Finland really bounced back from all of this war nonsense of the 1940s. They joined the EU in 1995, and once the Eurozone was implemented in 1999, Finland joined. So today they use the Euro as their currency. And in more recent news, because Russia is doing to Ukraine what they did to Finland back in 1939, Finland decided to join NATO. Finland is a neutral country. They have been, since their independence, honestly, they were kind of forced into those three wars all back to back to back. So it's not like they like picked a fight and all that. They're a neutral country. So is Sweden. Since Sweden fought so many wars, they picked all the fights that their resources just ran out and they declared themselves neutral. So Sweden and Finland joining NATO a month ago after I'm filming this in August 2022 is kind of a big deal because NATO is a, um, how do we say it? it? Well, it's a treaty, but it's an agreement that if anything happened to a member state, everyone would pitch in to help fight that enemy. So that way, Russia can't hop in and take over like they had done quite a few times in the past, just slowly chipping away at Finland's border here until it was all gobbled up, until the revolution, Finland became independent. Anyway, I'm rambling now. That's pretty much where we are in Finland's history today. Let me flip through this book and look at this reindeer. I think they're so cute. They're like big fluffy deers. Very sweet animals and apparently there are no wild reindeer they're all domesticated by the Sami people and I guess their meat is really good which okay so this is what most of Finland looks like so many trees you can see some water in the distance and lots and lots and lots and lots of snow Here's some kids having fun in the countryside, riding a little pony, and you can tell, like, how windy it is. It must be so cold, but they're having, look at those big old smiles. They're having a great time. Here's a political map of Finland. You can really see the lakes a lot better on this map, can't you? So many lakes in this area. Here is a reindeer race. That looks like fun. Let's hold on tight. Here's a neighbor visiting another one. What are they doing? Oh, it just looks like they're sharing the morning news. How nice. And here's a midsummer festival. Still lots of ancient traditions and cultural things have been retained since very, very, very long ago. This is taken, does it say over here? It just says this is taken during summer. So this is what the nighttime looks like. 
Here's more. Look at how this, these trees are just covered in snow. My goodness. So much snow. Here's a physical map, and now you can really see the Lake District here, can't you? It's a very wet place. And here's one of the little islands in the Gulf of Finland. Excuse me, in the Gulf of Finland. I'm getting hiccups. Um, this is what most of Finland looks like underneath all of that snow. It's a very granite, very rocky place. And uh, it looks like this was a little mine, too. I'm digging out some of that rock. Finland is actually rising also. Very interesting. It's uh, gaining more land. And this is winter. This is a winter daytime. This is the middle of the day in winter. The sun is not up. It just looks like dawn all the time. Here's the beautiful Aurora Borealis. This is something I have to see in my lifetime. I'm not north enough to see it. It looks so beautiful. And uh, farmland. That low wetland, perfect for farming. This is in the Orland Islands. You can see a bridge connecting a bunch of them right there. And a little houseboat. I think it would be fun to live on a houseboat. I just like little homes. I like tiny, unusual homes, personally. This is in Lake Saima, the largest lake in Finland, and you can see there's lots and lots of islands throughout the lake here. And here is a Sami person with their reindeer. Very cute. Is this one white? Oh, pretty. It's <laughs> sweet. Summertime. They're out enjoying a nice day in the summer. This is Turku Castle. It's now a museum. Look at this picture of this perfect firework. Snapped it just right. This is in Tempere. There's some ice melting off of this river here. Melting off in sheets, it looks like. And a little autumn day. Look at these spindly trees doing their best to survive in this weather. Oh, what does it say? Oh, it's marking a snowmobile trail. Interesting. Sweet owl. Let's see, this is a great gray owl. Very intense eyes, but it is an owl. That's what they have. Another beautiful lake here with islands and big green trees. And some more spindly trees. Just struggling to hold on to this weather. Lingonberries are a very important part of the diet. I should also say that in Finland they have something called every man's right, which means you're allowed to camp wherever you want. You can pick berries wherever you want. You can do whatever as long as you aren't harming the environment or causing damage to private property. That's pretty cool. I think it'd be kind of fun just to like go camping in a local park or something. It's something that we don't have a lot in the West. There's a sweet mama bear with a bunch of baby bears. It's a lot of babies. A beautiful red fox in the snow. And this is the Saima ring single seal that you can find in Lake Saima. Very, very endangered animal. This is a Siberian flying squirrel. You can see some of its little like flaps there so it can jump. Here goes a grouse, probably looking for a quick meal in the snow. Good luck. A sweet little hedgehog. <laughs> so cute. Hedgehogs are sweet. And this is one of the national parks. This is Uruka Kunin National Park. Lots of parks, of course, in this kind of environment. This is Olaf and Linda Castle, which is really pretty. Lots of these kinds of buildings from, this is from the 1400s. Yeah, lots of buildings in this corner of the world. This person is dressed up as an indigenous Stone Age person would have looked in this kind of house. This is kind of terrifying. There are a couple of accounts from Romans and um, like ancient Swedes, I want to say that talk about the people, the Finns, and how they're just like bizarre and weird and scary. <laughs> you can kind of see why. It's a big bear person, right? Alright, this is Torku Castle again. 
And let's see, this is, which castle is this? Oh, um, Ham Castle, or Haim Castle, I'm not sure, <laughs> I think it's Haim, anyway. Alright, divided Finland, so you can see just how much Novgorod took up this chunk of Finland here, and how much Sweden took up this chunk of Finland here. And like I said, it was Orthodox and Catholic, but it would be the um, Lutheran religion that would eventually take over. Battle of Poltava. Let's see, it was an important victory for Russia in the Great Northern War, which is one of the wars they fought with Sweden. Here's Tsar Alexander the First. Let's see, the University of Helsinki. Lots of really old universities in Finland. Tsar Nicholas II, the last Tsar of Russia. Let's see. German troops transporting supplies through Finland during World War I. Interesting. And then some Bolshevik prisoners, it says, during the Finnish Civil War. Gotcha. This was a very important general during the, um, I want to say World War I. Yeah, he, like, he was fighting with Russia in World War I. And he joined the Whites during the Civil War, and I believe he became president, right? Dun, dun, dun. I'm not sure. I'm just scanning it. Anyway, I believe he was president. Yes, he was elected president in 1944. National hero, Gustav, uh, Carl Gustav Mil Materheim. Some children lining up for food during those rough years in the early 20th century, mid 20th century. Finland during World War II. Alright, so all of the green was Finland, 1939. 1940, this green area was taken over by the Soviets. And then in 1944, they took this area, it looks like. And area gained. They took all this back. This all used to be Finland, apparently. Anyway, quite quite a rough one, and you can see the, the Germans retreating up here, too. Let's see, this is during the Winter War. All bundled up, because it was a winter war in Finland. This is during the Lapland War. Some soldiers coming after the Germans there. And this is the Berlin Wall, right? <laughs> okay. Soviet troops in Bulgaria. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a picture. Let's see. European Union. There's Finland joining, I suppose. Working hard in school. And um, this was the president when this book came out. It's a little old. This is um, Toria Holonen, who actually was involved in a political scandal and resigned. Urho Kekkonen, he was president for quite a while and very beloved. If you remember Urho Kekkonen National Park, that's, that's him. And this is one of the old prime ministers, Mati Vanhanen. Here's the parliament. And let's see. It says the Finnish Supreme Court made a controversial ruling that or did a Finnish mother to take her two sons to the United States to be reunited with their father? And there's people protesting that. The flag. Let's see, the flag of Finland shows an off-center blue cross on a white field. The colors represent the nature of Finland. Blue is for Finland's lakes and white is for the winter snows. Very simple. We've got the EU Parliament there in Brussels. And there's President Hollinen with the Japanese Emperor. Oh. oh, he was visiting Finland. There's beautiful Helsinki. And there's a map of the area here. Oh, fun. And a one horse open sleigh. Here's the Nokia building. And 
This is their Euro coin with some little birds on it. <laughs> All the countries in the Eurozone, they get to have their own special back of the Euro. So yeah, the resources map, you can see most of everything goes on down here. Looks like just mining up here and right here. Let's see what this is. It's a paper mill from all those trees that they have. And these are ships being built in the shipyard in Helsinki. And building a cruise ship in Turku. Let's see. Oh, cool. Look at this. That's a neat little design there. Cool. <laughs> and this is at a gold mine up in Lapland. A little farm. And Sweet Rainier says this is tourists experiencing winter in Lapland. There's some Nokia phones. Who's flashing back right now? <laughs> I wasn't allowed to have cell phones then. Can you believe? <laughs> I didn't get, I got my first cell phone when I was 17, which is unreal now. People get their first cell phones when they're like seven or eight now. This was what everyone had, these Nokia phones. Let's see, this is a bridge connecting um, buildings in a university. A little market here, we got some potatoes and flowers, onions. There's some sweet faces there, except this one looks a, a little, a little grumpy. <laughs> Also wear sweet faces in their traditional Sami clothing. And here's some Romani girls. Is that culture also exists in Finland as they do. They're spread out all throughout different parts of the world. And some Somalis in Finland, the largest non-European immigrant group. And let's see, working hard welding. And let's see, that's the population map. You can see everyone pretty much lives down here, very sparse up there, because it is in the Arctic Circle. Working hard on an experiment in high school. And the University of Technology. There's so many pictures of school because they have like a really, really great um, school system. Like... It's one of those places where they have like short hours, no tests, no real homework, stuff like that. And then everyone's super, super smart. Some newspapers there, you can see some finish. Big beautiful dome here. Let me see where this is. The um, Lutheran Cathedral in Helsinki. Very cool. And wow, look at this. It's a church that was built into solid rock, the Tem. Paliakio Church. Oh dear. I didn't really practice my Finnish. <laughs> I've been mostly just learning how to pronounce the cities. And uh, Uspensky Cathedral in Finland. It's an Orthodox Cathedral. And Turku Cathedral. And this is Mikhail Agricola, who brought Lutheranism to Finland. And this looks like a Jewish rabbi. The synagogue. I'm guessing during during Hanukkah. <laughs> Lots of menorahs around. Let's see some Sami drums here that they use to communicate with the spirit world. Check that out. These are the national animals of Finland. These swans and big old brown bears. <laughs> Look at this. My goodness, what is this? This is a Jean Sibelius monument. Oh, cool. Probably one of the more famous composers to come out of Finland. Reading the library there. Let's see, this is a character from the Kalevala. Neat. And the national poet, I think he wrote the Kalevala, right? Yo yeah, Johann Ludwig Runeberg. Pretty sure, right? To bet on it anyway. Moomin World. <laughs> Who wants to go to Moomin World and see the Moomins? Who loves the Moomins? I love the Moomins. <laughs> it is so P 
pure and sweet and just very, very finished. It's the best. There's cartoons, there's books, they've got all kinds of moon and stuff everywhere. It's great. There's Jean Sibelius in it. Doing a traditional dance. And wow, oh, this is Swoman Lina, which is this really cool fort that the Swedes built when they were in control on an island outside of Helsinki, I want to say right now. But I, if I remember correctly, it's never seen any actual combat because when the Russians decided to attack, they came in by land and not by sea. So now it's just kind of a place to hang out, enjoy the nice weather. Central Railway here. It's very beautiful. Ooh, look at this. This is at the Design Museum. Very fancy. Ooh, the Flying Fins. Some Olympic runners here. Doesn't say which ones they are, but anyway. There are, there are a bunch of them. Famous runners. The Olympics. And of course, cross-country skiing. It's a fun way to get around and have fun during the winter. Cool. <laughs> Sponge here. Reading was he reading some Donald Duck? <laughs> and they're buying some flowers at the market. Dogs of Finland, the Finnish Spitz, and the Karelian Bear Dog. This is, these are sweet faces there, aren't they? Sweet littles. And enjoying the nice summer day, having a good read. Some apartments in the suburbs. And let's see. This is a country home. So since there's so much space and so much landscape to see, a lot of Finns have second homes out in the Lake District. Lots of bikes. Very bike heavy country. A uh, little snack. You've got some rye bread there with cucumbers and tomatoes on top. Like a half sandwich, I guess. Rui Sleepo. I'm not sure. Traditional bread. See how it looks like you butter it as you go. And some fish, of course. Lots and lots of seafood up in Finland. There's a dentist. Oh, so awkward. Uh, Midsummer's bonfire. Still lots of very ancient traditions, right? Ooh, Christmas market. I, I always say that America should really do Christmas markets. I feel like it would be really huge. It's a very uniquely European experience. Do you think it would be more widespread? That's the end. This is in Rovaniemi, where Santa lives. I'm telling you, he really is there. There is a whole workshop you can go visit and see all the reindeer and everything. But anyway, that's going to be it for tonight. I'll have a whisper video for you tomorrow about Finland. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I hope that you have a very good, good, good night.